Welcome back to Mortgage Giants. I'm tall, he's taller, let's talk mortgages. <laughs> but first, I read something very interesting, and it said that only the top 1% of podcasts make it past episode 21. And I think this is episode 22. Dang! So congratulations, we're the top 1%. No way. People give up before then. Yeah, that's, 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 that's crazy. I, I didn't think it'd be that low. Like, I mean, I know podcasting is definitely, <laughs> you know, kind of butt of jokes. Like, everybody's doing podcasts on something or other these yeah. days. But, like, I'm sure those numbers are inflated because how many people started during COVID right. and then probably died off. But still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Cool. Time flying. Yeah. yeah. Top 1%. <sighs> Who knew? Add a little badge on our, like, picture. <laughs> Yeah, image <laughs> top one percent. Yeah, that's 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 definitely thanks to you because uh, you definitely when you start something you don't uh, no, you don't, don't give quit. it up. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. it's good. Yeah, cool, man. So we're a couple weeks past the Bank of Canada rate drop, mm-hmm. which was good news. I think for everybody. Yeah, earlier than I expected based on some of their talks, right? Like they were hinting yeah. at July. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, Kim. Yeah. And, and now the odds of the uh, announcement in July are actually up to like 73%. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So so things are pointing like, uh, you know, another one's going to happen in, in July. So um, that will lead to potentially a third and maybe a fourth in 2024, which was definitely more aggressive than I thought. Yeah. So what that would do is maybe take the pressure off of um, maybe a nice plateau of rate stabilization in 2025, mm-hmm. still with the goal of hitting one and a half to two percent total right by the end of the 2025 calendar year. Um, so if we're going to count last week, so last month's July's uh, upcoming one. Now we're looking at, you know, another six rate cuts between now and the end of 2025. Yeah. So that's a nice timeline to see that happen. If all of a sudden, you know, you're, we're coming up to September this year and we still haven't seen a second cut, the available window shrinks and then right. it becomes harder to see a path to hit that number. Yeah. But because it's starting now in, you know, month six, seven or middle of 2024, I think it's very doable. Yeah pending any other, you know, massive global events. Yeah. But. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So that is good. Um, so yeah, like you said, it's been a couple of weeks. What are you seeing? Are you seeing? Well, initially, what did I find very funny, and I guess not everybody understands it, but the amount of fixed rate people who gave me a call that day. Like, so do I get better rate options? It's like, well, no. I mean, this only Im- directly impacts the variable rate, right? Bond yields affect the, f- the fixed rates. Yes, they might both go down at the same time, but the prime rate is not directly impacting the fixed rate that they're going to see. Yeah. So I think people just think that the Bank of Canada is referencing all rates are going down when they're talking, when that's not actually the case. So that was the initial, like, day of yeah with so many people in fixed rates like oh so now you get a better rate now like no not no. quite but yeah <laughs> yeah just like not <laughs> today yeah yeah you did like you will yeah yeah, yeah. It, it was nice to see the the fixed rates come down as well yes um so it was just a little bit after mm-hmm. yeah yeah so yeah and and at that point in time too we had uh, a couple rate options that were already low, mm-hmm. like ATB, for example. Yep. They've been really aggressive this season. Mm-hmm. So they didn't move immediately. They moved after. Yeah. And really, so you're probably already getting a better rate than where all the banks dropped to. Right. They're just playing a little bit of catch up. Yeah. They use that news to get a little closer to the best. Yeah. They still didn't take the lead or become the best rate or, um, and, I'm obviously, I'm speaking only in certain rate categories. Yes. Um, so eventually, all the banks did move over the last two weeks. Yeah. But a lot of them, it wasn't in a position of front running. Right. The fixed rate. 
yes. in a race. Yeah, just catching up. So yeah, but but uh, still, what that does is it allows more uh, uh, rate options for a buyer. Yeah, because they might not qualify or be a good fit for whatever the leading rate is. Mm-hmm. Um, so when all those other rates catch up, more options become available. Yeah, and and then now they're back in. You know, there's less of a spread between best and second best. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which just means that it, we don't have to worry as much for, across the board, like timing, right? Because if only one lender yeah. has the best rate, they're going to start backing up with all the applications going their way. So if we have other options, then yeah. everything that's tight timelines, we still can do good. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think... Um, Application flow picked up. Mm-hmm. Um, the market is suffering, I would say. It's becoming tighter. Uh, sorry, with regards to the purchase pricing mm-hmm. and multiple offers. Yeah, and like short condition. Very short condition yeah. timelines. So yeah. uh, that's going to continue to be a, a talking point this summer. Yeah. Like one came in today for me, and the condition of financing is Friday. Right. But we need to get updated documents in that time. So yeah, it's one of those things where <laughs> you got to be on top of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and again, like even with a quarter percent drop in variable, um, that doesn't equate to many dollars and cents on a monthly mortgage. No, but it could equate to you paying an extra five, ten thousand uh, dollars on the purchase price. Yeah, a great realtor. Uh, very busy, does a lot of uh, work, and his, um, you know, kind of point on the subject is if you're going to multiple offers, you should be accounting for about five thousand dollars over ask for every offer. Right. That's how you need to remain competitive and win these things. Yeah. So if you're going into an offer, knowing that there's already five submitted offers, you need to be about twenty five thousand over list yeah if you want to be competitive yeah, that's crazy so 25,000 i mean that's that's going to be the first couple of years yeah of um mortgage payments mm-hmm. like if your if your mortgage payment is 2 grand or 2500 yeah um bucks i mean the first 10 months of mortgage payments are going to go just towards what you paid for over asking yeah not to say that the house isn't worth it Every time you do a purchase, the house is appraised. Mm-hmm. Either you're doing it or the bank's doing it. And like, so the, the house is worth it in the market value, um, but, but it's still in a less competitive time or if there's more inventory, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's a significant chunk of uh, cash. Yeah. And I think that brings me back, and I probably harped on this a little bit. Interest rate should not be the driving factor necessarily in purchasing mm-hmm. the house. Uh, I, I just wish there was more inventory yeah. dictating market value, um, new builds and, and all that stuff coming online and not just this, um, you know, neighbors competing for the same house, yeah. creating this artificial value right. of housing. Yeah. That's, that, that's what's gotten a lot of people into trouble is just this competitive, uh, you know, neighbor versus neighbor yeah. home buying environment that causes everybody... A lot costs everybody a lot of money and emotion. Like and if you're emotion. losing out on yeah. stuff, yeah, you keep losing out. You're going to have certain feelings towards the people that are helping you and what's going on. Yeah. And... Gifted down payment. I read too is we're at an all time high. Oh yeah, all time. There are more um, family members stepping in to help. Yeah. Help the kids. It's and help almost the... a necessity yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, buyers. that's back to this divide that's being created because there are families that are in a position to help. Those that means that that family is probably already and were home buyers and yep. owners and have been homeowners. Yeah, and the people that whose parents did not have the luxury of owning a house, mm-hmm. they don't probably have equity to draw from. Yeah, which further puts you behind yep. and decreases your chances of home ownership. Yep. So the statistics on if you've come from a house uh, of home ownership, yep. your odds of owning a house are like four. I might be misquoting that. It's significant. Yeah. Your odds are increased dramatically. Sure. Um, and 
when more gifted down payment is coming into the equation, that's why. Yeah. So, so these divides are getting bigger. Yeah. Um, the haves and the haves nots, and it's harder to enter the market. So that sucks. Yeah. 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 So equality, which is a huge, you know, uh, Canada wants to be a champion for equality. I think they're doing the opposite. Yeah. Right now. They're doing achieving uh, some pretty uh, <laughs> achieving. They are not achieving that anywhere near to the level that they want their publicists to think they are. Right. It's that's how I would yeah view that. The number they have to hit to like be able to provide homes it's astronomical. Like it's it's, it's insane. Yeah, it's insane. Not achievable. Um, if every person that immigrated to Canada would have to know how to swing a hammer mm -hmm. and be in a skilled trade and be dedicated to home building. Mm -hmm. Not to just build the houses that are needed today, yeah, but to house themselves. Right. So we've got to bring in the trades, we've got to bring in the people to fulfill the need, mm -hmm. the demand of construction. But when you bring in people to fulfill the current demand, yeah. you then kind of, it's like two steps forward, one step back. Right. Two steps forward, one step back, because yeah. you keep on needing more people to fulfill, you know, the current demand. Yeah. So it's 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 broken right now. Yeah. It's uh, it's going to take a lot. Uh, I think of figuring out to, <laughs> to get for us sure. anywhere near targets for home building. Yeah, and uh, apartment building, whatever it is. Yeah, there's something. It's so random, but like there's a a game that you can build cities. Right, like it's not SimCity, but just, yeah. it's like a, a more in depth where you can like uh -huh. go deep and actually budgeting and, and all of this stuff, and it has like very detailed stuff on it where there's people who can't rent homes and you have to like figure everything out. Cool. And somebody tried to put like AI software or something into it to try and fix this problem in their game. Yeah, and the AI software came up with no rental properties. You can only own an owner occupied, okay. and it solved the crisis in really? their game. And so, like, they were coming from an angle of like, maybe that's what we need to do. Like, there is no rental properties allowed. You can only have an owner occupied. And like AI yeah. software solved it in this situation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I mean, no, it's not that straightforward. But it was just interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I don't know. I don't hate it. I, yeah. I, I, I don't. I see a lot of. Um, merit there for sure. It's just like, how do you, like, I don't know how you would even implement that. There's people who that's their business is running sure. rental properties and they're not going to be willing sure. to give up on those. There's a difference between purpose built rentals and property management mm -hmm. and then independent rental investors. Yeah. I think that's probably what they're trying to eliminate is the rental investors, investors. you know, market and then let the government. Do purpose-built rentals, and, right? You know, massive REITs, um, the real estate investment corps. So, you know, build purpose-built rentals, and um, you know, some regulations and you know, rent control and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Maybe, yeah, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Even the investor side of things, it's not becoming as it's not lucrative as it once was, mm -hmm. and um, with where rates are right now and deals rentals still aren't really cash flowing so there's uh, fewer really good rental purchases in the market yeah so that's good that leaves more houses available for home ownership yeah uh, owner occupied um, but but yeah the, the rentals are harder to come across and now with taxation um, you know with, with where the government is going with um, capital gains mm -hmm. and passive income and all that like even what you do make on a rental uh if it appreciates at a reasonable clip you're giving so much of that back mm -hmm. uh to to the government yeah you know so the profitability of them is uh definitely dwindling and there's a lot of people that say good like you know who cares about that right. person yeah um but the other part of that equation okay now bear with me here the real estate investor does play an important role in this whole ecosystem. Right. Okay, so you think of any large tower or any investment or a big building project that needs to get going off the ground. Mm -hmm. 
the developer is going to put all of this capital in. They're going to secure the land. They're going to build a nice show center that they're going to try and sell units. And they've got to sell like 60% of those before they're going to get financing that's pending approval, right. waiting on pre-sales. Mm -hmm. So those pre-sales need to happen. And who's doing a lot of those pre-sales are speculators, real estate investors who are going to say, yeah, I like this project. I like the location. I think I like what that property is going to do. And they're going to put their money into that project and sign a contract, give a deposit and wait for that property to go. Mm -hmm. Now, when that property's done and it's built, if that real estate speculator did their homework right and what happened is accurate to say that that property was worth when I bought it 500,000 and now I can sell it for six, 650, mm -hmm. power to you. Because yep. without you putting that upfront contract in place, that building would never have been built. Right. So that is the devil's advocate kind of view on that. Yep. A lot of people really want to hate on the, the, the speculator. Um, but without them, that property wouldn't even start it. Right. And then we would be even further behind on the housing demand. Mm -hmm. So a lot of speculation and things did not go and are not going well currently in some of the bigger cities and a lot of people are losing a lot of money and that is the risk that goes into any real estate transaction yeah uh and a lot of people there's no sympathy for them mm -hmm. like nobody cares about that person <laughs> no. they don't no but just think that building would never even gotten off the ground without them right so i just want to say that from the other side of the coin right there's always two sides mm -hmm. and if a person's willing to put up that kind of cash and risk they are entitled, in my opinion, to make a buck. Yep. So, um, there's also a group of people who want that. Like, they're not everybody wants to be a homeowner. Yeah. Right. Like, some people just want to rent. They don't want to have to worry about all of that. So, there sure. needs to be those type of places. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, that was just kind of a point that that had come up on some stories uh, recently, kind of in my sphere and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just understanding that there's, there's, we're all connected and you don't really want anybody to fail too poorly. Right. <laughs> because uh, that'll put a halt to construction. If yeah. too many construction projects uh, don't work out, mm -hmm. you're going to remove a big portion of the people that are actually helping them get, uh, get going. Yeah. So. But like there is that element of people are going to have a very hard time being understanding or sympathetic if the person that is complaining or like talking about frustration is coming from a place of abundance. Yeah. Like if they have five rental properties, 10 rental properties, a building with like 20 units and this person can't get a home, there's not going to be any sympathy or understanding no. that way. No. So. No, no, that's, that, that's right. Um, so no, it's fair. And, and I, and I, uh, I'm not siding one way or another, yeah. but it's just important to understand how, uh, the whole system, works yeah. and that there's players at different levels yeah. and uh, we all kind of fit in there somewhere yeah and uh, i think uh you know luckily we, li we live in a part of the world where we're allowed to want to level up and uh because that person today is struggling to get a house when they get their first one the odds of them getting another one increase yeah and um if given presented an opportunity Will they take that rental investment on? Or are they going to say, no, I remember it was too hard for me to get a place before I had my first. I'm going to leave that for somebody else. Yeah, no, they're going to take the deal. <laughs> they're going to take yeah. the deal. If, if the rates work and the rents would support yeah. it, and they would then, it kind of becomes full circle. They mm -hmm. get that pride of saying, I am now a rental. Mm -hmm property owner yep. like there's a sense of pride there because you knew where you were a decade ago yeah and now you're the shoes on the other foot so um so yeah it, it's just you know that's awesome with mm -hmm. where we live we have access um to tr try and aim for more yeah and um so some people just get a little bit further down the road yeah and at that point you're talking with massive amounts of money and one 
mistake can be fatal. Right. If generally you're losing one rental property, um, you know, you should be able to survive the loss of our rental. Right. But when you're uh, talking about, you know, people losing entire buildings, buildings. yeah, um, the effects can be fatal. Yeah, for sure. You know, so, so, um, so yeah, I just don't think that we're all so different. Mm -hmm. uh, and if apples are apples, apples to apples, we're all given the same opportunity to try and reach for more. Most of the time, I think the people would, would yeah. go for it. It also but, speaks to like just entering the market, right? Like if the, your chances of getting into something better go up astronomically by just entering the market and being a property owner, yeah. get in if you can. Yeah. Like instead of waiting for the perfect home or the perfect pre-approval amount, like if you can get in at 300, but yeah. you're hoping for four, get in at 300, work towards getting four or five or whatever that future yeah. looks like. Yeah, build equity. Yeah. Um, Home ownership is also a way to fight against inflation. If inflation is occurring, mm -hmm. your bank account is going the wrong way. Your dollars sitting in your bank account are worth less, mm -hmm. but the odds are your property is appreciating. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's a point to your yeah. argument is uh, home ownership, property ownership is a great combatant for inflation. Yeah. So so that helps, and um, yeah, just keep rooting for the local municipalities and, um, uh, you know, to get more properties mm -hmm. being built. And I heard a terrible point about the cost of building permits just blew up. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think what's going on is like the federal government is trying to do these things like the housing accelerator fund. They're trying to like give communities, municipalities uh, funding to lay infrastructure and, you know, rezone. Yeah and create density and there's all these things, but then it's the municipality is also approved building permits and plans. So what they've done now is they've increased the, the nice. cost of doing it. doing it. Cause now they're like, it's a way for them to collect more revenue for the municipality without raising taxes on the current homeowners. Mm -hmm. So, because again, these people are all elected officials who really want to remain elected officials. Yeah. You can't keep jacking up property taxes, so they're right. looking for other ways to increase revenues. Yeah. Well, knowing that development is such a massive need, they're cranking up the permitting and the cost to do it. Wow. Whereas it seems counterintuitive because if you built the houses and you moved the people into your towns, you'd have more tax base right there. Yeah. Um, but no, they're trying to catch them on the front end. and. And penalizing the people that are trying to do this stuff, and um, and that just oh that 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 really yeah. pisses me off. Yeah. Like to be honest, I I just hate that mentality because the large percentage of the constituents or the voters are not developers. Right. They're not like they're just living, mm -hmm. you know, paying their property taxes. Yeah. Um. So who can you piss off? The small percentage of people that are trying to solve your housing problem. Yeah. Uh, that only lasts so long. Yeah. And, and I think if, uh, you know, a certain portion or a city or a, you know, municipality said, you know what, we're going to go the opposite route, that would be an awesome experiment yeah. in economics. Yeah. I would love to see somebody just say, you know what, you guys are going this way, we're going the opposite. And just see where the money starts flowing in from and who's going to start doing uh, or meeting the, the needs. Oh, I bet it would be huge that yeah, whatever just, town decides to do that would grow. Like, it would... I, I would think, but I mean, I, that's not... That's out of my depth, but that's just where I go as, like, opportunistic. Mm -hmm. You know, I would look for, well, they're all doing, going over here and people are jammed up with money to spend and houses to build because they know the demand is there, I'll be like, you know, welcome. Like, yeah. like welcome with open arms. This is what I'm going to do for you. Yeah. And this is what you're going to do for us over the next 10 years. Yeah. And this is, you know, but, yeah, and I'm not in politics, but yeah. maybe I should be. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, man. Start way, a campaign. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm way too sensitive. My wife always says that. She's like, you can't even handle one snarky Facebook comment. You'd be out. You'd be out in a week. <laughs> You're constantly putting doing putting videos out responding to people. Yeah. Oh, I'd be trolled. I'd be the easiest trolling target ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh so. man. Yeah. 
yeah, I mean, uh, it's great. Rates are turning in the right direction. There's going to get a lot of people into houses. Um, I just hope that uh, prices remain stable. Yeah. Proud to be in Alberta. I think it's an amazing spot to be. Yeah. You know. Should so. be a good rest of the year. Yeah. I think so. Excellent. All right. We'll catch us next time. Thanks for watching or listening.